Hi there, my name is Molly. Welcome back to the Lefty Nets Podcast, episode 11. Hello, welcome. My name is Molly. I'm the maker behind Lefty Knits, and today I have a typical podcast episode for you. It's been quite a while since I've had just a regular podcast episode. I have some finished objects that I won't be sharing today. I'm actually not certain where all of them are, which is part of it. Some of them are blocking. My headspace has been a little bit strange since I've finished grad school. I got COVID, then my boyfriend got COVID. Things have been a little bit strange. So I'm not going to put pressure on myself to find everything that I finished recently. I'll just probably be wearing them in future episodes and I'll talk about them then. I will though talk a little bit about what I'm wearing. So this is the Current Mood uh, Wrap or Shawl by Leslie Ann Robinson of Knit Graffiti. So I made this in Malabrigo Machita in Swamp, Aurora, and Three Little Pigs, starting from darkest to lightest. So Swamp is this color, Aurora, Three Little Pigs. Machita is a single ply, 100% merino superwash yarn, and I have shown this before on the channel as a whip, maybe as a finished object. I don't think I showed it blocked. And I do want to talk for a minute about blocking this. I live in a 600 square foot apartment in the San Francisco Bay Area with my boyfriend and our cat Lola. So space is at a little bit of a premium. And this thing is like six feet long, probably. It's taller than me. I was not really certain how I was going to block it. And I came up with something that maybe other people have done in the past, but I folded it in half. I uh, washed it, soaked it, stretched it out into like a, a long shape. And then I folded it in half and I pinned the sides of it. Let me just unloop it. I pinned the sides like together as it was folded in half, you know, like, like this. And then I pinned the ends separately, kind of across each other. So there were some overlapping pins in here, but the end does have a little bit of a scallop. I think my end might be a bit tight, so I don't know how well you can see it, but I have a little bit of a, there's like a little bit of a scallop texture and um, I pinned that separately and it actually worked really well. I was worried that it was going to dry with a really hard fold line in it. I obviously didn't pin the fold itself and it actually didn't. I think it, it came out looking pretty nice from the, uh, the folded blocking. I definitely recommend trying to block things in half if you, like me, are working with not very much space. Um, it works really well. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about my finished object. My first and only finished object is this baby sweater. This is the Good Old Raglan by Twisted Knitwear. It's a free, simple, DK weight raglan. I don't recall all of the sizes, but I know it goes through at least newborn to probably like three to four years old. Uh, this is the nine to 12 month size. I used Lion Brand Kobu in Lichen. That's a DK weight yarn, 282 yards per cake, and it's 51% cotton and 49% rayon from bamboo. This is from my boyfriend's friend's baby that was born in May, I think. I meant to finish this earlier, but May was really the reckoning of the end of grad school. We traveled at the end of May, and then I got COVID at the beginning of June. So it's been a little bit of a busy time. And because I knit a bigger size, it doesn't matter that much anyway. So I tend not to knit newborn items. I don't know, you know, how long they'll fit for. Probably not very long, if at all. I know some babies are really big and I don't know exactly how the newborn sizes are going to work out. 
I just, I don't know that much about babies. So I always err on the side of bigger because I feel like it's more likely to fit for longer. And because kids are growing, it'll always fit eventually. I liked this pattern. I thought it would be a pretty good one. I got this yarn and I was looking for something DK weight. Uh, my typical baby knit would be the flax. Usually I knit flaxes. That's a worsted Aran weight pattern. So I figured it wasn't as good of a choice for this. And I think this is a pretty good alternative. It doesn't have quite as much instruction as the flax. And maybe it's not as customizable. So the flax comes with options for a neckline that you just cast on with the sweater or a neckline that you pick up and add later. It also comes with a document to add short rows, which I've never done. I've never picked up the neckline or added short rows to a flax because I've only made them for babies. And the one time I was thinking about making the short row version, I had a striped sweater. And now this sweater and I think all of the sweaters I've made that had short rows at the neckline, the short rows were like right after you, like right at the top of the back here. And this one was not that, or this one was that way. The flax is not that way. So the flax is short rows, I believe are like right before you split for the sleeves. So because I was making a striped sweater, I didn't want to add the short rows here because then the stripe pattern would get weird. And you know, I've knit short rows enough that it probably wouldn't have been that big of a deal to improvise or to look up another pattern or whatever, but I decided that it just wasn't something I could be bothered with for a baby sweater. I don't have much else to say about this pattern. I think it's pretty good if you're looking for a baby sweater and you're maybe at least an adventurous beginner. The fact that it's free means a lot to me, especially when I'm knitting a lot of baby items. I like being able to find versatile patterns that I can just repeat ad nauseum all of the flax. And I think this one will probably be added into my repertoire because yarns like Kobu are pretty widely available and I find them pretty good for baby sweaters. They're soft. I think that if you're looking for a free, simple baby toddler pattern, this is a good one to check out. So let's go ahead and move on now to my works in progress. Well, I've had a little bit of cast on in the past couple weeks. I have especially been knitting a lot of swatches, which I'll talk about in a little bit. I think part of it is that I recently finished something for myself and I didn't have a project that was really ready to cast on at that point. I had swatches to knit, but I've been really good this year about washing and blocking my swatches and waiting for them to dry because I've been burned a few times by swatches that I sort of knit a couple inches on my needles, measured it and called it a day. And that didn't, who knew that didn't work out very well. I've been overcompensating a little bit. I've knit a bunch of swatches, blocked them, re-knit some swatches. I've been I've been really going going for it with the swatches, but I do have a couple of actual cast-ons that I will talk about. And the first one is the Quilty by Tiff Nealon. This is a fingering weight short sleeve tee pattern, and I'm knitting this in uh Fleurville four ply for my main color. The colorway I'm using is called Hibiscus. That's a 100% superwash merino yarn, and it's 382 grams, 382 yards per hank. So I'm using two, two hanks that I've balled up here. And my contrast color is Nitpick Stroll. It's the Bear Stroll. I don't have a cake handy, but you can see it here. It's just a natural undyed superwash yarn. So it's 75% merino and 25% nylon and 460 yards per 100 grams. I got it to dye originally. I have a couple of natural dyeing projects planned and easy dyeing projects, but it's 
ended up kind of being something that I wanted to incorporate into a few projects when I was looking for a contrast color. So I used it again here and it didn't take very much. I will be using it again for a Pico bind off at the end of the body, but that's the last of the yarn and it didn't take, probably took I don't know, 10 grams maybe. I'm making the third size of this pattern, which should be a 39 inch bust. It's meant to be worn with one to four inches of positive ease. My bust is about 36 inches, so that should be just about perfect. This pattern specifies a gauge for the twisted rib, for the color work, and for the stockinette, and I really was not about to, <laughs> I wasn't about to make three swatches. I maybe should have swatched the color work, but I didn't. I did go up a needle size. I used a US 4 for the color work and I'm using a US 2 for the ribbing and a US 3 for the body. My gauge on the stockinette was 25-ish stitches per inch as opposed to 24, and I just decided that I was gonna go with it instead of sizing up again to a size 42, because I might end up with this being closer to like 38. 37 inches, but I figured my gauge swatches are usually a little bit tighter than the actual knitting that I'm doing, and I should be able to stretch this a good amount. Color work yolks are really like potato chippy for me, and I kind of forgot that, where you want to see the color work pattern take shape, so you really just are like, oh, I, I can knit one more row, I can knit one more row, and then all of a sudden you're done with the yoke. I am currently using helical knitting. This is, I don't believe this is hand dyed, but I figured it would be good to avoid pooling. I didn't do it on the yoke. I'm only doing it on the body. And I actually might stop soon so that I can cut the smaller ball, which is the one that I did use for the top and work on some of the sleeve, the sleeve work. I think that this has been a good project to practice helical knitting. It's not super hard, but it's nice to kind of get in that groove with something where it's not stripey, it's not probably gonna pull that badly. So it's working out really well. I'm really happy with it. The one thing I find kind of odd about this is the needle size specified in the pattern. I'm assuming Tiff Nealon is just a very tight knitter because the body is recommended to be knit for a 24 stitch per inch gauge using fingering weight yarn on a US 6, which is four millimeters. The color work that she recommends you do on a US 8 and the ribbing I think is a US 5. So that's a five millimeter is a US 8 and a US 5 is a 3.75 millimeter. So those are like really big needles to be working fingering weight yarn. I am a pretty loose knitter, so I often end up going down needle sizes, but I, I like don't know people who are knitting, especially at a gauge like that, it seems really like 24 stitches per inch on a US 6. I don't know, let me know. Does that make sense to you? Like, would you do that? I, I obviously, I feel like I, almost never look or I barely look at this point at the recommended needle size because I just know that I'm probably gonna go down. I think I'm better at guessing if I just kind of look at the gauge and look at the yarn I'm using, I can kind of pick a needle size for myself based on that. So that's typically how I do it. But I think that this one for me was a really good reminder, like how differently people can knit. And maybe I'm the one who's like weird that that seems really big, big to me. But, but yeah, let me know. Would that be like an appropriate needle size for color work for you, for fingering weight yarn? Anyway, um, I really love this yoke. I think the tonal looks super nice with this color work. I did talk about this pattern before as part of my Make Nine. So this is another one of those that I am checking off. It, it probably won't be the last, but it might be. Um, so it's just nice to kind of actually follow through on one of the things that you said you were gonna do and have it turn out looking pretty nice. Ugh, losing a ball. My next work in progress is something I talked about in my fall plans video, and that is the Sunday Morning Wrap by Lisa DeFruscia for Espace Tricot. I have it in this little project bag. I believe the 
artist of this is uh, Dawn Catherine Studios. I will link this bag below. It's available at Black Squirrel Berkeley, my one of my local yarn stores. Generally, I just recommend shopping there. It's a great store. Whew, lost a couple stitches. So I'm using uh, I'm using yarn I got in Alabama for this from Bucksnort Alpaca Ranch. I got it at Sparkle Studio in Huntsville, Alabama, and it is 200 yards for a three ounce hank and I got four of them. This colorway is called Shooter, and I believe Shooter is the name of the alpaca that this yarn came from. So this pattern is written to use about 750 yards, I think closer to 760, if I'm not mistaken. But there is some instructions in the pattern to help you use all of your yarn if you want. And it just uses these sections of twisted rib, separated by garter stitch uh, sections. And it's going pretty fast now that I've started it and now that <laughs> I have it going. It took me a while to get this right. It's been a while since I've cast on just like, this is 219 stitches you cast on and you increase every other round. I don't mind sharing those kinds of details because it's free. Uh, you can go check out the pattern yourself, but I just, I think because I mostly work top down sweaters, I'm not casting on that many stitches usually. And I kept just messing it up. I kept miscounting, messing up my stitches in a way that it was hard to rip back without frogging the whole thing. I find that really hard at the beginning of projects. Sometimes I go to drop a stitch and transfer it to a needle like the stitch below and then it'll just unravel all the way to the bottom and it's hard for me to get that fixed. So I recast this on a bunch of times. The yarn looks a little bit ropey and noodly at the bottom, but I think it's turning out pretty nice. I'm using a US 6, um, I did try a US 8 and it felt a little bit too open for my taste and the bottom is curling a little bit, but I think that that will work itself out when I block it. It's got kind of a nice like rustic look. I think that this will be a really cozy shawl when it's done. And I think I'll probably finish it pretty quickly. I have this much left of my first cake. It started out looking like this. So, it, it goes pretty fast. I might sort of have this just be something I like noodle on when I need an easy project. Although that's less important now that my quill tea is at a point where I'm just doing stockinette. So this is almost a harder project, but I do find that I really do like want to pick this one up and want to work on it. So it might be finished sooner than I think. I just, I'm excited to wear this. It feels very like fall cozy to me. So I'd like to have it by the time the weather turns. And I think that is very doable. So I have a small segment that I'm going to tentatively call Swatch Corner that will segue into my acquisitions because it's, it's related. So the Shifty is a pattern by Andrea Mowry, it's pretty popular, I would say relatively well known. And I'm using Cascade Heritage Wave. This is another one of my fall projects and here is that swatch. So the colors I'm using are Woodsy, Lava, Nightshade, and Forest from top to bottom here. I don't love the way that these colors are working. I think I, I feel like this color, this lava, the red, is a little too stark in contrast with these two cooler colors. My desire was kind of to generally emulate the palette of the first Shifty. So Andrea Mowry has recently re-released the Shifty with an updated fit, I believe. I, I haven't compared the two versions of the pattern very closely, but I first 
became aware of the shifty with the first version and the color palette of the first version of the shifty is kind of where my inspiration was coming from in choosing these colors and with the red looking so stark I decided to go back to the drawing board and try looking for some different colors. I decided, although ideally it would be helpful to go in person and look at the yarns, I was going to just order a little bit more Cascade Heritage Wave. So I got three new colors. I have dried flowers is this one, Blues, and Boston. My thinking was the dried flowers might be kind of a nice like purpley blue bridge with some like pinky tones that would have a little bit of the warmth with the pink, the pinkness, but not as much as the red. Now I also want to note that this uh, woodsy skein is a lot darker than my others, so this is kind of more of the, the vibes. I don't know how different they look on camera, um, but they're different for sure. Not like a totally, totally different yarn, but just a different, a little bit of a different lighter palette. I thought the Boston might be good since it has the reds and some purples along with the blue. This is obviously a Red Sox inspired color. And I thought the blues was just going, you know, like a classic sort of bridge color between the the purple and the green. But I think I'll probably go with the dried flowers. I think that this will be the move. Um, I'm not certain. I don't really want to swatch again because it's just kind of annoying to swatch. Like I'm definitely not going to like wash and block another swatch, but I think it's probably a good idea for me to knit a small swatch, at least to see how the colors work next to each other and with woodsy in between. The original Shifty has kind of like a maroony purple vibe with some green and some brown. The colors do change a little bit more because um, it is spin cycle so I think that there's just a lot more dramatic shifts in the colors and this is kind of a hard thing to buy for when you're not looking at the individual skeins but I think that the dried flowers is gonna be the way to go there's a part of me that's like oh maybe I should do like the dried flowers and the Boston I'm probably not gonna do that. I think I'll probably use the lava in the Boston and maybe the leftover like nightshade and the dried flowers or the dried flowers and the blues. Or There's a lot of Andrea Mallory patterns that use spin cycle that I can kind of replace this for. And I think especially since a lot of the other ones are shawls and cowls and wraps and stuff it just isn't gonna be as big of a deal maybe i'll even go for like some pressed flower shawl action i don't know i figured like i might as well just get a little bit more of the yarn try a couple shades see what i thought and i think i'll probably do that in terms of my swatching i think my move is probably to swatch these two colors with the dried flowers and see how I like it. So that is where my shifty stands and these are my three new skeins of yarn. If you have any ideas about like color palette, what you might choose, how you would approach this, it's hard to hold all of this. But if you have any ideas, let me know. I don't think my color theory is like quite as good as some people's, although I do have some wins. So it's, it's not terrible. It's okay. That's all I have for you today. I just, you know, I've been doing a pretty good job knitting. I think I'll have some projects I'll be finishing up that have been dormant for a long time that you'll be seeing shortly. And if you want to check out what I'm working on and get the updates, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I post videos every week 
And if you wanna give this video a like, I would really appreciate that as well. As always, I'd love to hear what you're working on. Drop me a comment, let me know what you're knitting. I'd love to chat. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.